Hi, I'm Mike Hogue from Lily House, and this is video two on our series about permaculture and money, or designing for life and right livelihood. And in video one, we discussed how farming was one example of a type one error in life design, a way that people often start down a path that doesn't actually lead where they want to go. I'm not really picking on farmers. I, in fact, I love farming and farmers, but Farming is, isn't permaculture. It's one useful pattern that can be used in a permaculture design, but it doesn't have to be. And permaculture can be so much more than farming. But farming isn't the only type 1 error we see in life design. In fact, there are a lot of ways that people uh, set out with certain goals and then design a life that fails to meet those goals because they really weren't clear about what they wanted to begin with. And if you don't know what you want, how are you going to get it? And we see the same kind of type 1 failures with all sorts of life design issues, whether it's the garden and people uh, designing a huge annual garden to feed their family and they end up putting in so much time to the garden every year that they never really transform their landscape. They never build systems that will give them long-term benefit and gain and really build a kind of wealth in their life and they end up with no time left over to turn all of their annual food produce into actual food that they'll eat. Or people start out with ideas about uh, transforming society and about making the world a better place, and they end up getting involved in systems that are inherently unsustainable and unjust, and spending all their time trying to fix those instead of just replacing them with something better. So when permaculture becomes really powerful is when we take this holistic view at life design and design for the outcomes we want to see. So in this video, we're really going to get into the basics of observing the system that we all seem to be trapped in and how to get out of it. So let's start by getting a few of our terms straight. First of all, what is permaculture? For the context of this series, permaculture is a system of design that can be used to design many aspects of our lives. And it's also something that we can use to transform our society and our ecosystems. And that's something that Bill Mullison was actually very concerned about. And we'll get into more of that aspect later, but I wanted to start this whole discussion with this quote from Bill. The greatest change we need to make is from consumption to production, even if on a small scale in our own gardens. If only 10% of us do this, there's enough for everyone. Hence the futility of revolutionaries who have no gardens, who depend on the very system they attack, and who produce words and bullets, not food and shelter. So Bill Mullison had the perspective that we could have a positive impact on society by directly changing the systems that we all rely upon to meet our needs and making them better for everyone. And the next term we need to define for the series is money. How can you have a series on permaculture and money without defining money? For the context of this series, money is your life energy. It's a symbolic store of your life energy. When we go to work, we're exchanging our life energy, our time, and our energy for money. And we hope then to exchange that for the things that we want to make out of our life energy in this world. So for a lot of people, the realization that money is their life energy is profound and transformative. Because they've never really thought that what they're doing is exchanging their life energy for the money. And in some cases, money is pretty awesome. But in other cases, money can also be a type 1 error that can actually distract us from getting where we want to go. We're going to talk about that more later. But the most obvious example is the basic situation we end up trapping ourselves in in our search for money. And this was my situation a few years ago. I want you to think about how you would actually diagram your own personal 
life economy, your life design, your personal economic design. Um, here's what mine looked like a few years ago, pre-permaculture. I'm into agriculture and farming and food. I kind of conceived of my life that same way, too, where I had inputs on one side. You know, for agriculture, that might be uh, our water, our seed, our fertilizer, and they all go into the system, the field, and then at the end of things, hopefully on the other end, we get to obtain some kind of a yield from it, our food, fuel, materials, medicines. Hopefully, what we got out of the system was worth more than what we put into it. And this looked a lot like my household economy, where I have inputs on one side, which are basically all money, the way I thought of it at the time, which was income from my sucky job. Uh, really, my job was a whole lot better than most people's, but overall, I felt kind of trapped into and I felt like it wasn't meeting my needs. And at the end of the day, if I wasn't getting enough money to have my needs met, I'd have to go and get a loan. And that would all go into my bank account in the middle, and then that would all go to pay my bills out on the other end. And hopefully at the end of the month, I had something left over to put into some kind of bank or financial instrument that basically made rich people richer. And of course, the whole time I was fighting against entropy, the idea that everything that we humans make tends to decline in time, to become useless or to go into chaos without more energy being put back into it. And for the most part, by energy here, I meant money. As an activist, of course, it didn't take me long to realize that our city was stuck in the same problem, where we were always looking at how to get more inputs in and how to pay the bills. And at the end of the day, it appeared that the city was getting uh, less rich over time. And of course, cities have degenerative investments too and have to pay for entropy. I thought about this system like a farm. I had to realize I didn't feel like the one who was doing the farming at all. In fact, it felt much more like I was trapped into putting out mammoth outputs to these corporations, to this ever-growing, insane, suicidal global corporate system. And in return, it'd give me back these puny returns in the form of, you know, uh, uh, a job and cheap junk and TV when I came home at night to keep my mind pacified, and it was just enough inputs to me to keep me putting out all of my life energy to them. And that's how I felt too. Like everything I did all day long went to this system. Every bit of my life energy felt like it was going to support the system that I myself opposed, that I felt like it was destroying the planet, making us sick, hurting people in my community. Yet, when I would eat breakfast in the morning, I would be supporting that system. And when I went to work all day long, everything I did with my life energy was to make that system bigger. And when I came home and I watched TV, I was supporting that system. And when I went to the bathroom and used toilet paper, I was supporting that system. And when I was born, believe it or not, I made that system richer. And someday, when I die, I will yet again make that system richer. I was being far. And from what I could tell, there was no good escape from this cycle. Do you ever feel this way? Do you ever feel trapped into supporting a system that you would oppose? And yet that system looks very different from the system of nature. And I started to realize I wanted my life to look more like this. Or perhaps more like this. Because natural systems have a superpower, a super energy source. Instead of having entropy, they have what we call negative entropy or negentropy. They actually grow wealthier, healthier, more diverse, and more abundant over time. That is how I wanted my life to feel.